Okay, this video is for Gary or Legan y'all, and um, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, and for Aussie 50. First of all, this is the gas dryer that I've been using on my compressor, and Gary had mentioned the fact that this is ferric chloride or something like that. I can't remember what you said this stuff was, but you mentioned that heating it will dry it out again. I knew that was the case for most desiccants, but I wasn't sure about this stuff, so I went ahead and took your advice. I just put it in this little metal cup here, and I put it on the stove on the lowest setting that it had for about a half hour maybe. And some of these crystals are far bluer than others. I'm led to believe I could have left it on there an hour longer or so and got even better results. But I just wanted to say thanks for convincing me to follow through with that. So basically this thing screws open real easily. I'm not going to open it now, but you just twist it. And it is screwed together. This is the $7 Harbor Freight version. And heating it up definitely recharge. Thanks to Gary, I'm back in business here with a gas dryer. I also am doing some testing here on this little air tool that I intend to one day hook up to an inertia propulsion device that I've been working on. I don't have the tools to build it, but I think I may know some people who do now. Anyway, I couldn't get this apart. I've always wanted to see the inside of one of these. And basically, it's no different really than one of these. I have a video that shows what's inside of this. It's just a, a vein type air motor. You can't really see any of the, what's going on, but there's little plastic veins in there that. Um, there's kind of like an eccentric lobe. It looks like it's concentric here, but there's a fatter piece and a shorter piece. I don't know if you can see this little groove out. Run some tests on this compressor. I finally did a couple of things to it. Took some of Aussie's suggestions about the vibration and all that. And I also realized that there's another constituent of these pipes that you have to take into consideration. Not only is vibration and metal fatigue a major issue, but thermal cycling is also an extremely significant topic when connecting anything to a compressor. The exhaust gases from a compressor tend to get extremely hot sometimes, and that can cause pushing forces and things like that and expansion on the pipe. So not only is this good for vibration, mechanical vibration. I don't know if you can see that kind of flexing a little bit. But it's also good for thermal cycling issues as well. Um, one of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I have intentions of building an engine that runs one of these. And I need something that gets up to about 20,000 to 50,000 RPMs but also has a lot of power still. I don't think this is going to do it. I also wanted to see what would happen if I could make one of these run off the excess heat of an exhaust engine by using some kind of steam generator or something. I don't have a tap and die set, so I had to do one of my tomahawk connections. I'll show you what I, why I call it that. They're actually extremely strong. Um, basically it's just a string and glue composite. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, it definitely looks like a really shoddy job, but I got string and two different types of glue as the composite holding that thing on there. The reason why I decided to use goop is because I'm going to tear that off. As soon as I get a tap and die set and put a more st standard connection. I won't be able to see my pressure gauge here. It's way up in the air. It goes up to about 350 I'd imagine. I also have it on a coil too. Now this pipe right here is rated for 80 PSI's. It seems like I seen somewhere it had a burst pressure of 140, but I've lost the box. Yeah. Let's pull a tiny vacuum.
Okay, it's just now starting to pump up. I'm up to 80 PSI's. about 140 160 just hit 200 psi's then also the insanity line I'm worried about this canister. It said not to exceed 150 doing a leak test, but the casing on this device said the compressor runs at 400 psi on the high pressure side, so I hope I'm not in danger of bursting this thing. Yeah, let's use that air real quick. No power to it. Okay. Once again, I'm just doing this to kind of get a kind of an observational on how much air it takes to run one of these because I had anticipated hooking it directly to an alternator. It obviously won't have the power to do that. I'd have to be generating a lot of steam. Seems like if I leave at least 20 psi's in the tank, it will immediately start back up, and I don't have to wait for it to do that seal up phase. Me and Ozzy talked about that before. So definitely a good idea not to let my compressor go down below 20 psi's. I'm going to hit 300 psi's this time. This gauge may fly off into my ceiling too, so I might get some kind of show here. I'm at 260 psi, and the gauge doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Yeah, that's 300 psi right there. It's probably about 325 psi. Sometimes this messes up my computer lifting it up like this. So, so there it is, my 350 psi air compressor. Thinking about getting a big oxygen tank. Those are kind of easy to come by for for free sometimes. Believe it or not, if you get in the right place, at the right time. My girlfriend's a paramedic. <laughs> 